when we see problem of Uganda as Museveni, Museveni will get away or die, NRM will still remain in power and we will still get annoyed. <laughs> I wanted as a stand in actually how can we rally ourselves and begin for our share in, the, in Uganda. When we start talking about the problem is Museveni, Museveni is soon going. And the day of election does not determine who should be elected. When you see the trend of the politics in Uganda now, the competition is between the son and the father. They are making it so hard to allow other people to be surface in the political arena of the country. All debate when you go to the beer party, to the farmers, is about Muozi and Museveni. It is already a determinant factor for 2026 election. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, in the whole world, in the whole world, there is no tough limit for members of parliament downwards. In the whole world, in the whole world, and I'm saying, even in the European countries, in the whole world, there is no tough limit for members of parliament downwards. I really feel, as a country, Uganda. If the citizen wishes so, we can we can be the first in the whole world to do that. If we can. Just like Honorable Gilbert said, we have traveled, we have traversed the world. There is no term limit for members of parliament. The term limit is for the president who has a very big part in traveling. But for affirmative, for affirmative action. Let us deliberate. If we will change, because it's con it, it will require amendment of the constitution. If the constitution can be amended, when and who? We go by it. There is a huge debate that liberal democracy is an Africa. It will not work. You will give it our lifetime, it will not work. Because we are using a European model in an African setting. So when we talk of democracy, liberal democracy, is just one type of democracy. We have uh, Chinese democracy. We have societies where there, there is no democracy, but the people are happy. For example, in Qatar, there are no elections. So if we are using regular free and fair elections to define democracy, what about those societies where there is no regular free and fair elections and everyone is living a more fulfilled life than in democratic societies. So the debate is even going bigger whether we actually need democracy or whether we can find other ways of allocating resources without going through a democratic setup. First, starting by the nomination fee. Our predecessors, at least the two of them are here, and one honorable Donga who is no longer a member of parliament, they decided to hike the nomination fee in a very shortish manner, I should say that, without, without mincing words. So that some of us will not join the August House. <laughs> and here I am there by the grace of God. There is a conflict. Not only with the politicians, even really, there is conflict there. And they don't want to talk about it in all men in here. Yet, we see them as cultural. We see cultural institutions that these are bodies that should control all the actual community. Today, if we are to say actually should take up leadership in Uganda, shall we really have anyone that we shall trust? Mine is on electoral reforms. Article 62 of the Uganda Constitution clearly stipulates that the Electoral Commission must be an independent institution. That's why, if you go down in the other clauses, the provision for free and fair election, electoral commission must be transparent, impartial, impartiality and neutrality. Those are the issues stipulated. I want to ask the returning officer, what provisions have you done to rectify some of these issues? Number one, 
in relation to the appointments. Because the masses are saying we cannot have an independent institution in the names of electoral commission when they're appointing powers that is by the president. And I want to reaffirm our commitment as the institution that uh, we are here to perform our mandate. As enshrined in the constitution, we are committed to delivering free and fair elections. Whatever that means, but we, we are able to put up all measures to ensure that we can produce a credible election. Uh, there have been issues in about the civic education. I'm happy one of the members uh, put it out that uh, we don't do for civic education. The Electoral Commission is mandated to perform what we call voter education in Article 61 of the Constitution. What we do is we prepare you for an activity of the election. That is voter education. And at the moment, as the institution, we have taken it up as a, as a, core, a core factor. We are conducting voter education in the schools. We are reaching out to various communities. And I'm sure that's why I'm here today. That's why I'm here today. We also want to appeal to one of the staffs of the election commission who was kidnapped. Broad daylight, a few days afterwards, his body was found. No statement from DC, no statement from police. Business as usual, we just moving on. And questions were raised here about DC taking bribes and DC getting in deals with people involved in the electoral process. Could this have been a bad deal or a deal gone wrong? Because fingers were being pointed at top officials and members of uh, members who went through in the previous election. For the death of that young man, I'm speaking as a youth human rights activist. We need an accountability from you as the person representing EC here. What happened to that young man? And I'm glad that the police is here. We need a report immediately as well. Decentralization. The reason why politics is going down, members of parliament, or my brother, Joffrey, you are here. Why do you give women to the local government and you consume? The biggest share of it. You are locating salary to yourself. <laughs> and then at the same time, you are straining up the local government and we are the one collecting tax as a grassroots. At the end, then you tell us nomination fee is this amount. And you come with a lot of billion. At the end, the community elects only people who cannot lead, but only make others who suffer. So, my request let's have a time limit during election, the electoral commission. Time limits. Sometimes you find in another district the results already declared. And another one, almost two days, the results are not declared. What would be the problem? Not time limit, I'm talking about time limit. You find in an examination, you never give exams. At the end of it, the same time, the exams are stopped, the one in Kitukum and other districts. Why do we have the same time also to declare the results? Why do you declare results past midday, midnight, and yet others by already, already 10, the results are declared? So they are fishing issues that are happening within the East. Thank you. Is it possible to have all the elections done on one day, right from Councillor Thierry up to the President? If it is possible, then we shall fight this element of low turnout for voting, a lot of money, uses, and the like. Then another one, this one I want to ask you, the MPs. Do you still say that there is decentralization in Uganda? I am happy when the professor to be uh, on top of financial control. If finances is controlled by the local, that is what called decentralization. At the moment, as I speak, I control the county. But the money that I collect is sent to the center. The one that comes is exactly as my brother, the speaker of Lamo, said. It becomes like something that cannot even work, do anything in the work, in the community. Then also to the MP again. The law that you make, do you want to be the first primary beneficiary of the law that you make? 
Because when you were talking about formative action, I saw how mixed reaction was within the new people, the MPs around here. As the Democratic Party, we look at the whole country and all the citizens. There is one mistake that we keep on repeating time and again the sense of accepting each other. The sense of accepting that we are all Ugandans. Remember the parliament, the Lecture Commission, no Kakitama, it's your application, it's a interview, Kai Kara Kara.